Alert. Lawrence Brown is on live fun. Live fun. He hosts the wonderful YouTube sensation that is Lost in the Pod. He's a filmmaker, a writer, editor, and a self-titled America's Finest British Import. So you got to take it seriously. Uh, again, it is a huge YouTube channel. Very entertaining. All about... Do you call, if you are British and you are uh, living in America, you're not an expat. I always thought Americans were living in England were expat. Ex-Brit? I don't, I don't know. know. I'm, we're not, this isn't the smartest of shows, Lawrence, but we are excited to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. The first question is, can you hear me? We yes. can hear you perfectly, yes. That, it sounds, it sounds like an ocean in the background. Oh, no, Bobby got it. So okay. We're good. Good. Oh, good. I'm right next to a big lake, so it could be from my end. Uh, yeah. Hey, just to take you up on a quick point, uh, self-styled uh, America's finest British import. That wasn't me. That was the Bloomington Gazette, which is a fictional newspaper that I made up. <laughs> you know what? For purposes of reruns, we can edit out that last part if you want. Uh, but either way, I, for one, agree. It's great. Um, there's, I learned a lot of stuff about England that I wasn't aware of. It's fun. Uh, I was born and raised in the burbs of Chicago, and it's fun hearing you. I mean, as Joe and I were talking about the show, you already know more about America than we do. Yeah, it makes me feel like not a good American. <laughs> it, it makes me feel like a fantastic American, even though I'm not one. <laughs> and it's, it's funny because just the other day, actually on Friday, I think the days are all rolling into one, I took a quiz on the United States presented by Britannica. And I surprised even myself by getting, I think it was something like 45 out of 60. And, and that's, you, a, that's really good. Thank you. Because when hovering around the internet, you always see those sort of gratuitous ads saying, you know, 95% of Americans can't get this right. Well, yeah. I, I did. So. Oh, I it's a good. cliche, but it's true. 90% of any immigrant taking the citizenship test would uh, uh, always would ace it way better than someone born here. Mm -hmm. They can't I, even be bothered to know a senator or something, you know? Yeah. I think in fairness, though, you, we are sort of conditioned to have to do that because we know that maybe down the road we're going to have to answer a question on who wrote the Federalist Papers and then forget about it, you know, once we've uh, gained citizenship. It's, it's a funny thing. The, luckily, there was a Broadway play to help us out with that one. But other than that, yep. we're mostly moronic about all things us. Um, well, it's a, it's a great one. And we had um, – we've got some um, – you know, uh, England tinged things. But one thing that I was delighted to hear, I believe it was you were on a podcast where we were talking about one of your first major um, loves of uh, America as a kid was a certain um, adventure seeking archaeologist by the name of Indiana Jones. And yeah. uh, I, too, uh, in fact, we showed a picture, a very dorky one of me at uh, about five dressed up as Indiana Jones for five Halloweens in a row, by the way. That was back when you didn't have you didn't get a fancy costume every every year. It was uh, I don't and I don't I don't think it was as big in the 80s Halloween in England. Perhaps I'm wrong. But um, anyway, and again, I am um, hoping for the best and expecting the worst. But the new trailer has just dropped. We aired it at the top of the show. Have you seen it? What are your thoughts on a fifth one? Should we have just killed this pig a long time ago? I've seen it, and I remember 1989 when The Last Crusade came out as a child, and I learned at that point that there was only 12 years that separated Harrison Ford and Sean Connery, who were playing son and yes. father, <laughs> and that Harrison Ford was something like 49 years old. Looked great for 49, but telling Lawrence then that he will reprise the role in 2023 seemed a bit would have seemed absurd, um, but... It's Harrison Ford, so yeah. anything's possible. I I don't know. I got excited, and Phoebe Waller Bridge is in it, and she's great. Oh yeah, she's one of yours. She's one of our, yeah, she's one of ours exactly. So, <laughs> and, and you know what? Indiana Jones has kind of a history of that, as does the Star Wars franchise of casting British people, usually in evil roles. So there's yes. hope for me yet. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's one of those things where as much as Americans are all seem to be Anglophiles, like, even if it's a country that's not England, but they can't be bothered to learn the accents, like, right, like there'll be a movie about what's well, mostly in Russia, and if the actors just can't nail a Russian accent, they all just have a British one. Yes. To differentiate, yeah. and that's pretty much it. So it's sort yeah. of a, a back and forth like that. You guys really nail the bad guy thing. We did, but you know, you'll notice you'll never have a baddie with a regional British accent, like a Liverpool. He'll, a baddie will never sound like one of the Beatles. Hmm. They, they, they always have to be sort of sound well educated, like they've been to Hogwarts or something. <laughs> yeah. And yes. which is a real school. I, I have to point that out. It is a real school. And, uh, you know, but that's that's part of it. Although I think there's been a twist recently because they, they've tended in recent years to also make some of the good guys British. In fact, they're just, they're only, they're exclusively casting British people now in Star Wars. I know. Wars. And, you know. Well, I'd sometimes Joe will often lament that they're only casting British people, period. Yes. Uh, yeah. As far as her auditions are concerned. No, it but. is true. There has been a shift, it feels, in American casting that over here, they just look at TikTok stars and social media influencers. YouTube just, sensations. Exactly. Get ready for your next film. Um, yeah. They're just putting, every, you know, whoever is has the greatest following into films because they want, it's money, right? They want the audiences. But then when you have a well-trained British actor and they take the arts super seriously over there, and education super seriously. Mm -hmm. Then when you have the actual talent next to the, hey guys, welcome back. It's like, well, which one are you gonna cast? The really talented one who's spent years cultivating their craft. It's a good point. And actually that describes, I think, Phoebe Waller-Bridge perfectly, uh, who wrote the hit show in Britain, Fleabag. I loved it. And it's fantastic. And she's not just a, a, a monumentally good actor, but a, a superb writer, too. Yeah. And I, I don't Killing know if Eve she is has... great. What's that? Killing Eve is great, which she also yep. wrote. Yeah. Well, by the way, if she, I, I am well aware of her ex, uh, great writing credits. That, to me, says that there is no excuse for this Indiana Jones to be bad. I feel like they've got mm. a writer right there. If they're yeah. running into a plot point they can't get out of, well, use her big I brain. I bet you her lines are going to be great because if she didn't like them, she's just Harrison right yeah. herself. Harrison Ford doesn't seem to me like he tolerates a lot of improv, though. Uh, he seems like a by-the-script kind of guy. Okay. I don't know about that. He, he was the guy who came up with the idea to shoot the guy with the sword, right? Initially, it mm. was going to be a long, drawn-out fight. And one day, he just got so fed up that he just mock, you know, pull the trigger. And they kept it in, in Raiders, and it became iconic. I like the cut of your jib, sir. And I will see you that and raise you one of the greatest improvs in movie history. It was indeed Harrison Ford that came up with the line after I know. Princess Leia says, exactly, I love you. He looks at her like a fucking badass who goes, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and Lucas didn't like it because sacred sweet Lucas Wanted, of course, Harrison Ford to say, I love you, too, mm. before he gets frozen in carbonite. But, oh, thank God it stayed. Um, but and so anyway, this gives us a good segue for our first on, on theme stories. And, I mean, there's some, you can find about 20 of these every year. Uh, the five best and five worst British accents in movies. I picked this particular one, and I have, um, guys, if you scroll all the way down, I have examples of others that are not in this article. Uh, that uh, some of these I just, I, I was never a Lord of the Rings guy, so I, you guys can tell me if you saw it. Uh, Alan Tudyk, Tudyk, Death at a Funeral, I never saw that. They mentioned that one. Mm -hmm. um, Brad Dorif in Lord of the Rings, most people thought he was indeed British. Mm. I don't know if you saw these movies, these are bad ones. How about this? I know you've watched this one. Gillian Anderson in The Crown. And oh. She's she's impressive. That, that yeah. one's good. See, I trust yeah. your ears more than hers. Oh, yeah. we forgot to even run our uh, wheel of accents graphic. <sighs> Throw that one on there. We always, if we have a thing where it involves act, uh, accents, we'll have Joe do it because all of her accents end up sounding like she's from Dublin. I don't know why I can only do Irish. Yeah, uh, we could, she could be playing a Russian, and it's it, it, it. there she is. Um, I. You saw The Crown, correct? I haven't seen all of this season. Okay, well, here's what they don't mention in the article. Gillian Anderson is half-limey. 
She would spend half her year, half yeah. her oh. years growing up in England. So I don't. Does that count? No, it doesn't. It's cheating. I yes. think it's like it's like Mike Myers when he did Austin Powers. He had a, a background in the UK as well. Yeah, it's completely. Cheating. His dad Plus, he's was Canadian. Scottish. That's half British, I think. Oh, so. yeah. totally. I think yeah. the queen, uh, the queen, soon to be Charles, is still on their money. Um, and uh, okay, Carl Urban and the boys have not seen. But what are some that? And a lot of these are obvious. Oh, oh, bad ones, of course. You always have to a mention Kevin Costner in Prince of Thieves, mm. and b Dick Van Dyke in um, in Mary Poppins. Oh, he was delightful. Yeah. I know, but That's... our ears didn't know any better. I know, I was a uh, child. Yeah. I think that's the thing about it. He is delightful because I, I was a child too. I was 10 years old and somebody asked the other day, what's a film that you have that's a guilty pleasure? And for me, it's always that film, but he gets derided for it. But do you know what? I think uh, that's because he's the star of the film. Um, but there are other people in that, uh, Christian Slater, who also, there are bits where it just cracks the accent just cracks, and we in Britain found it hilarious. Not quite as hilarious as the fact that they walk from one end of England to the other in about the space of half an hour. <laughs> it, it, I forgot it was about monumentally that. stupid, but it was. It's still great. It's still great popcorn cinema. Yeah. I think. Alan Rickman biased. just tearing up the screen. That's all you need. Yeah. Um, oh, they gave they gave him carte blanche to do that. It was part of his contract. They said, he said, I won't be in this unless you can give me free reign of this character. And they did. He actually, at one point in the movie, has a line that says, I'd cancel Christmas. Yeah. Bill, your tooth <laughs> fell out. Tooth you got so Cut into his it. heart out with a spoon. <laughs> it, it just unreal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, at least it wasn't a spoon. Um, and then, okay, now this is one. Now, I'm, we're going to have to appeal to your ears on this one. I heard this one in all of the Oceans movies and thought it was really good. Mm -hmm. But what do I know? Any... Attempted an accent, I think sounds okay to me. Was Don Cheadle oh. and Basha in the three Ocean's Eleven movies? Intr Do you know what? I've never seen any of those films, weirdly enough, so I can't comment on it. But You're not uh, really that... missing much. I uh, forgot that yeah. he used an accent in it. Yeah, I, think I like if you it. just know an actor as a certain way. I don't know, you don't fixate on the few times that they deviate. The other hmm. one being Keanu, this one is sort of um, un, uh, really hard to debate. I mean, Keanu Reeves, I think we have a hmm. clip of this one in, of course, yeah. Bromp Stoker, super tricky, trippy, Dracula. Yes, I think it was course, 93. Sir. Here we go. If I may inquire, what in fact happened to Mr. Renfield in Transylvania? Nothing. Nothing. Personal problems. Close these transactions and your future with this firm is assured. We can be married when I return. Well, Lawrence, your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've done, I've done community theatre over the years. Got a lot of respect for community theatre, but that sounds like a 12-year-old community theatre actor attempting a British accent for the first time. Yeah, they're doing Scarlet Pimpernel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and it's, it's a famously bad uh, sort of accent. Which is, is sad, because I was just saying to Tara the other day, you know, I have a lot of respect for Keanu Reeves as a person oh, yeah. uh, from, what I, from what I know about him. So I feel, and same with Dick Van Dyke, right? It feels bad sort of ripping into them over these things. Completely. You can usually do it with a sense of humour. I don't think that there are British people at home going, oh, I now hate Keanu Reeves because he butchered that. We'll just sort of make fun of it. Absolutely, but he, I mean, but, he, but he's part Canadian too, though, isn't he? He has no excuse. Yeah, absolutely. Well, also, yes. you have all the money in the world for a dialect coach. That's what there I was are people who can be on set with you as you are doing a scene, and in between takes, saying, "All right, this vowel, you need to tweak a little more." So as not to veer back into uh, the Emerald Isle, Joe actually spoke with someone that was great with accents, and you recently auditioned for a Ukrainian refugee. Sure did. And then she just made sure, she just had the dialect person read the, the the lines and then just worked on mimicking just those lines and you oh, did it right you yeah did job. definitely yeah it's it's it was just me mimicking so when asked to read any That's other lines that it. i didn't practice couldn't do it but <laughs> you know it, it's like hearing a song and and learning a song you just 
if you hear it enough, you can mimic it. You can repeat right. it. Um, yeah. It's not so much like in my veins. Well, this was just something based off of a lot of whining on Reddit. But any of the any any uh, examples come to mind where you've watched it and you just heard uh, the American seep through what was supposed to be North London. I, you know, I you've you've actually covered some of the ones that I would have uh, suggested. Um, I don't know, because there are examples, in fact, of the opposite being true. I've often said that René Zellweger in uh, Bridget Jones oh, is very, yeah. con very convincing with the accent. And the, it often gets overlooked because there are so many bad examples. Without um, a doubt. Uh, yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow, I was always told, was very good. Yes, yeah. Uh, questionable choice of business practices, but uh, <laughs> can I say that? Am I allowed? I don't know. But Look. yeah, you, you're right. She was. I, I saw her in the film Sliding Doors in the 90s, and I was convinced she was British. Shakespeare in Love is one of my all-time favorite movies. I don't care who knows yeah. it. Um, but look, you right. can mock those vagina stones and vagina candles all you want, but billions, billions of dollars, my friend. Well, also, her company just sounds better with an accent. Goop or goop? <laughs> oh, that's, that's a very good question. Yeah, I'd not thought of it like yeah. that. I suppose you're right, yeah. Goop. And her first husband um, was British. Well, uh, the opposite as far as bad American accents, I, you guys are a lot better at this than we are. One that comes to mind, and this doesn't count because it's an Irishman, sort of, is uh, Colin Farrell. Well, I will always hear Irish come out of his American yeah. accent. Um, he's, I think he's gotten mm. better. And then the, the most egregious example would be, unfortunately, because he's a treasure, Michael Caine. I don't think he got the member that me memo that uh, Cider House Rules was in New, New England rather than just England. And he doesn't even try on the yeah, odd no. chance he's supposed to do an American accent. Could, doesn't even bother. He's yeah. Michael Caine. Yeah. 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 Michael Caine and, and Sean Connery in that sense are cut from the same cloth. Oh, yeah very much known for their regional accents and they will stick with them and it's fine we accept it because it's because as you say it's michael kane you're like yeah that that works yeah. you're from the bronx it's fine i i buy it i yeah. think that the whole uh, james bond's origin story starts in an orphanage in scotland was just based on the fact that sean connery couldn't be bothered to do anything yeah. besides sean connery yeah yeah he must have worked that into his contract oh yeah without question yeah absolutely yeah. um I, any of the other ones i'm trying to think like usually in my ear the ones that do good america like i'll tell you what i remember when batman begins came out all, Amer all of America thought Christian Bale was American because he would do the promotional interviews. Mm -hmm. I'm still not clear as to why, in an American accent as well. And mm -hmm. But he's always great at, at that kind of thing. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think, though, is it, he, he was born in Wales, but I think he's got Canadian heritage again, right? There Hasn't he? Canada. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I know. It's a strange one. Well, and all those and Hallmark movies are shot in Canada. Oh, yeah. I'm seeing a trend here. Yeah, Go to Canada you... to be successful. Yeah, it's a, exactly. A tax yeah. trend. Uh, well, you yeah. had a couple that were... Well, I just have some questions just for you. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. We're getting ready, right? Netflix, the Harry and Meghan special mm. series. I actually don't even know what it is. I just read the headlines, and yeah. we're supposed to be shocked and appalled that this thing is coming out. Um Americans are obsessed with the British monarchy. Yes. We always have been. I'm not sure why. But I was wondering if there's something that British people are just as obsessed with in America. Like, do you guys have a similar sort of fixation? Yeah, I suppose a similar allure would be Hollywood in some ways. Okay. Uh, for me growing up, just seeing American action films... It it made it gave me this sort of false notion of what America is, but it was an idealized notion of what America is, and it and it told me at the age of eight, ooh, I'd love to live there. Sorry if I went high pitched there I on like radio, it. you know. It, and and it just it also told me that America is palm trees and beaches wherever you go, sort of almost forgetting that there's like a huge piece of land in the middle, um, and and all of that. And uh, so I think we do, and just as how here when the British royal family is romanticized, that then helps to romanticize Britain just in general, I think, for Americans, when in fact people who live in Britain don't see it through that lens as such. And in fact, many of us are not exactly pro-royal 
shall we say. I'm yeah. not particularly anti-royal. I'm sort of neutral, really. But there are a lot of people that um, that could go both ways with it. Well, the question is always, should we continue to have a monarchy? But I think the answer is obvious and just in the sense that this is your Disney World. This is, like, responsible for, like, a huge amount of the tourism, is it not? I mean, it, it, like, yeah. th that's just such a big Yeah, to go and it. watch the changing of the guard. That's always, like, the huge thing well, for Americans. Yes. And I mean, it is. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, it's a good point to, or a good comparison, I suppose, to compare it to Disney World. I mean, I just said Hollywood as a sort of blanket term for the film industry, but maybe Disney World is actually an even closer thing given the tourism um, and given the role that princesses play. Mm. Oh, good God, yes. So I mean, ugh, my nieces, I can't keep them out of fucking Disney princess outfits. It's, 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 it's mind blowing. Um, I know you often talk about. Um, British euphemisms that have seeped into our culture. You are so right. And I granted, Joe and I probably hear it more than most people because I believe there's more British people in New York than Kent now. But um, I, the what, some of the ones that I have noticed over the past ten years, taking the piss. We now say that that yeah. we didn't know, uh, or and also, and even also saying pissed as a means of drunk. People now understand that, whereas yeah. if they used to talk to a Brit and the, some, they said they were pissed, they just thought they were angry with them. Um, I, I also would also say, and this one I never thought was going to get big, you guys say cunt like it's dude. Yeah. And here it was the king of all swear words. Uh, yeah. And now people are saying cunt a lot. All the time. Yeah, uh, we've got and that from you guys. Yeah, and I think it with that particular word, I think it's probably going to depend where you are in the U.S. as yes. to one's reception of it. Because in yeah. the Midwest, I, <laughs> my my viewers are not going to love me saying this, but a few years ago I said that word in that very British way around some Midwesterners, and they were stunned. <laughs> uh, so you know, maybe I have to be careful of it. But since we are allowing swearing, I this is oh, music yes. to my ears, by the way, because I can't do that on my show. You know, wanker is another one that I've heard Great. said every now and again over here as well, My which favorite. is both good and bad for me because, you know, to some degree, I feel at home. And to other purposes, I can no longer get away with using British swear words as a substitute for American swear words in mm. situations where I might otherwise get in trouble. For instance, I used to work in a call center when I first moved here and this customer wanted to get into conversations about British slang and I just started rattling off within the workplace while being recorded uh, British swear words like wanker, bollocks, you know, all of these things. And it just felt so alien because if I did that back in Britain, I'd have been fired. Yeah. So, it was weird. I love, and you had mentioned too, and like, I just, there's something about, they just do it better because there's so many consonants. It's very satisfying. But bollocks, I love bollocks. I did not know it was, I actually wrote it down. You describe bollocks, uh, as the seventh most severe word in the British lexicon. I had no idea. I just meant, I always yeah. thought it just sort of meant like, like, oh, shucks. Like, is you full of crap? I don't know. Yeah. Like, I should point out that that was for about 20 years ago when I studied, found that it sort of ranked British oh, swear okay. words by severity. Right. Um, it is, I think, still severe. Like, it's not a word that you should be saying around your parents, which is something that I discovered much to my chagrin when I was 11 years old. <laughs> and, you know, come to moving to the United States, I saw an adver advertisement, advertisement? You say advertisement. I like it's, advertisement. Yeah. Advertisement. Um, I like schedule. I, I, yes, I saw a, a scheduled advertisement nice. for, for Newcastle Brown Ale in which the word bollocks was used prominently and no heads rolled. It, it was absolutely fine for that to happen. Well, um, I think they did... A, I love it. They did a study in their laboratory about... How people would take nice. it. Thank you. Nice. Well done. You know what? It didn't even sound that Dublin-y. Uh, laboratory. But it's one of the words you have to say with an accent. Laboratory. Um, yeah, I suppose because you'd say lab, right? Just yeah. shorten it. Or yeah. laboratory. Oh, I just got real Jersey when has I said the, it. In, has the overall, uh, oh, the, the American influence gotten to the point where people no longer refer to cigarettes as fags over in, uh, in England? Or is that still, you can still say it as long as you're referring to damage in your lungs? That is a good question. I think there have been instances of sort of public media 
having to censor it for that reason. Yeah, but like that maybe maybe people. not so much the British public because they don't think of it in terms of it being a slur because mm-hmm. you know right. obviously it has a different meaning. So I I would imagine it's still around. But the thing is, I think we have fewer smokers nowadays just because of you know laws that have been passed. So yeah. it's probably like with cigarettes within my lifetime, it might be a word that just disappears. Who knows? We'll see. You have rightly mentioned your healthcare system and a comprehensive rail service as being two things that you very much miss. Mm. And I could certainly use both. Uh, anything else these days, especially now that Christmas is happening? I mean, we still don't, we still can't wrap our heads around Boxing Day. I still mm. don't really get that. Uh, I, I enjoy Father Christmas versus Santa. That's kind mm-hmm. of folksy. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is. But well, are there or differences hap- in the happy holiday? Happy Christmas versus Merry, right? Exactly, oh, yeah, right. there's a lot, lot of terminology, and as you say, Boxing Day is something very much absent, I was about to say, from North America, but guess who does celebrate Boxing Day yeah. just to the north of you? There it those, is. Those, those folks again. Yeah, damn Canadians. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, and, and that was one of my favourite holidays, because it's one of those things where the pressure's off. You know, Christmas Day, there's a bit, bit of pressure on. You have to do, you have to deliver the presents, not to suggest that I am myself Santa, although I did previously have a, a large beard. I, uh, you know, feel a bit more pressure on Christmas Day to just do things. Boxing Day is very much a day devoted to just kicking back, watching the football, and previously getting drunk. I don't drink anymore, weird side fact. It's almost like that. So is this the closest equivalent that you guys have to Thanksgiving? Oh, that is a good question. It could be, although I think depending on who you are, there's a little bit of that busyness pressure on Thanksgiving yes. right, to get the turkey done and stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, but you're right that that's accompanied, I suppose, with kicking back and watching the football, if I'm not mistaken, or the other kind of football. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I, see, I can see a sort of uh, comparison there. Well, now, Joe uh, is a big fat fan of all things England. Uh, apart from the dating scene, uh, mm. I think that she ha- she dated a British guy and it sort of soured her. Can uh, I tell my I- own story? No, I'm mansplaining. Great. Uh- <laughs> uh, no, I dated a British guy for about six months. Uh, he was here in the States for work. Uh, we broke up because he went back um, to Britain to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, we said we would stay together, and then, like, a week in, I was like, oh, this isn't going to work. I hate WhatsApp. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But he would get rip-roaring drunk. Uh, I think one time I counted he had 18 gin and tonics. Wow. Mm. Uh, he would then lose everything, either his apartment keys, his wallet, his cell phone, it was like just wrangling a child. Uh, so I'm, <laughs> this is just me venting, but uh, he also was obsessed with footy. Yeah, yeah, Not footy. soccer, but footy. Uh, and beans on toast, you know, all the classic things. But I'm wondering if, is it like, like a trophy, like dating an American woman? When you hmm. tell your friends back at home over the pond, is that something to brag about, or how do Brits feel about that? That's a good question because I've actually dated. Uh, I was about to say multiple Americans makes me sound <laughs> like a ladies' man, but I I dated uh, two Americans, including who uh, one who is now my wife, and I never I never really saw it in those terms. I just um, I personally just I feel like I connected to. I don't know, to their Americanness in some way, but I didn't, I never thought, oh, oh, Daz, hey, Daz, come over here. I've been dating an American, you know, just to get brownie points. But I yeah. could see that. Or are you maybe, embarrassed? Because that's the other side of the coin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could be, yeah. No, I personally am not really, I think. Um, I don't know. I could see instances where maybe some are, you know, they do see it as kind of bragging rights because it it almost feels like I've married into a Hollywood film. Sure. Going back to what we were saying before. Um, I don't know, but I I must say that the description that you just gave of this uh, person you dated, I mean, it sounds like me 20 years ago. It sounds like a lot of (laughs) British guys that I grew up with because we, I mean, from my generation and before, apparently to a lesser extent now with the younger generation, we did drink a lot. We binge drank. 
all the time, every week, and we saw it as kind of normal behavior. Um, and so it's kind of, you know, that is a bit, a bit of a difference, I think, between Brits and Americans. I'm not saying you don't have Americans, of course, who um, have that sort of issue to deal with, but it's culturally part of mm. being in Britain, or was at least. And uh, yeah, I, I can't imagine... I can't imagine dating that type of person. I, I, I now feel sorry for my, <laughs> my fiance from 15 years ago. Yeah. I love this. And like I dated, and I use the word very loosely, uh, two women from England, not at the same time, of course. But I've, I found that it's delightful in the sense that it's just very laid back. There's mm -hmm. no, and again, this could just, maybe this was just the situation I was in, but the, you didn't have to define your terms. Mm. Uh, getting pissed at a pub was just as, was, that was good enough. Phil, it's because and you're practically a Brit with your lifestyle. <laughs> that was not where I was going. But I, I, go. I It accommodates you, yeah. I, I, you I, but American women can be, for lack of a better phrase, a lot. Uh, you, you, you've, what, what have you seen difference-wise? Well, I think potentially that's Americans in general. Yes, um, that, maybe, yes. maybe if you know, if you come at it from a certain angle. But no, you're I, right. yeah, but I think you're right. I think there is a sort of laid backness, which I kind of miss actually about sort of just socialising in Britain. Because um, I, I, you know, like I said, I've worked in theatres in both countries, and it's kind of there's a stark difference between just how the group mentality is within those situations. I think Brits are a bit more sort of like, weirdly, a bit more, I don't know, uh, open and approachable. And, 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 and in, in, that, in that circumstance, they want to give hugs after the show. They're all about the hugs. Mm -hmm. In America, I didn't know that where I was in Indiana, I went to give my cast members hugs at the end and they all felt weirded out by it, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in sort of invasion of personal space and all that. And in hindsight, I can sort of step back and understand that too. So it's, it was all weird. I don't know if that answered your question. No, yeah. I, I, lo yeah. I love little things like that. Well, gosh, I mean, this guy, any last one, we uh, unfortunately went over uh, because I, we have so many more questions and we would love to have just you have back. just have to get you back. But, um, Do it. Before yeah. we let you go, give us your plugs, your promotions, your prescription drugs. Uh, yeah, absolutely, although those are in my medicine cabinet. Oh, but the, uh, the, the, the link, if you want to check out more of my work, it's I run a YouTube channel called Lost in the Pond, as in the Atlantic, and it's youtube.com slash lost in the pond. It's great. I love it. I can get lost on there for quite a long time. Thank you so much, Lawrence. I would love to bug, bug you for possible January dates if you're down. And sure, a, sounds great. And an early happy Boxing Day. Yes. Thank you. Same to you.